Hello everyone, I'm Pat Connerty. I'm the facilitator for this week. We'll be looking at the growing crisis uh, in the workplace. By way of background, um, I'm a um, researcher with Cooperatives UK and I'm also a member of a worker co-op here in Wales. From 2000 to 2010, I was involved in the National Demonstration Project for Community Land Trust that was successful in advancing a new wave of community land trust, both in rural and urban areas across England and Wales. Since then, I've been looking at, with Cooperatives UK and the, and the Cooperative College, a solidarity economy type solutions to the growing crisis of precarious work. What's interesting from our research um, is that from 2008, really, the financial crisis, work has been changing quite dramatically. The introduction of this, the smartphone and its ubiquitous nature now has advanced a new type of very disruptive technology. Of course, the, we, we understand that and see that in the media in relationship to the collective actions, legal actions against Uber and Lyft and the protests by taxi drivers all over the world about um, the assault they're facing from the new technology. But there's a wider problem that needs examining and we've looked at in the research. It's not just that the gig economy is growing, it's that all sorts of forms of precarious contingent labor can be seen. So for example, um, in the growing use of part-time staff, agency staff, the, the spread of zero hour contracts, um, casual workers of all sorts, um, that's become those forms of precarious uh, work without really much in the way of rights, in many cases no employment or economic rights and very few social rights at all have become the new normal. It's very profitable to engage people this way because of course you can avoid as the um, gig economy model uh, has been designed to exclude from the business costs um, those economic and social rights that loan can actually increase profitability for, for corporations by 20 to 30%. And those firms um, for, like Uber and Deliveroo are spreading across all range of service industries uh, today and increasingly so. The guy standing video is a good introduction to how this is actually creating enormously difficult to uh, overcome social barriers to securing those rights as they're disappearing, particularly for younger workers across Europe and North America, but in many other countries across the planet. So we looked at a variety of strategies for overcoming and, and finding a solidarity economy solution to this crisis in our research. We've done three reports um, since 2016, including one for the Trade Unions Congress. In 2017. So I'd like to take you through some of the ideas that could be seen as signposts as you'll work through the material this week. So we, 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 we isolated and highlighted from the research a number of emerging good practices that actually are indicative of what could form the basis of a kind of broader strategy. So for example, SMART in Belgium is a co-op. It started as a social enterprise about 20 years ago, we converted to a co-op a few years back. It's been very interestingly creative in providing a range of services for freelance workers of all types, beginning in the arts, but then spreading to almost all types of freelance workers today. It's supporting some 90,000 freelancers in Belgium and has been spreading to other countries as well across Europe as a cooperative solution. So effectively, it, it provides support as a kind of shared back office. So members of SMART can get education online, they can actually um, um, rent equipment, they can secure increasingly workspace in different cities in Belgium. Um, they can have their invoices handled by SMART, which is normal, and also the debts are collected by the cooperative. Payment to the freelancers is made by SMART within seven days of passing on an invoice to them. But interestingly, even more longer established in, um, in India, Sewa is a uh, trade union uh, launched in 1972 for uh, women workers in the informal economy. Beginning in Gujarat, it spread to other parts of India. It's now got two million members to establish its own cooperative bank. And it's also supported the development of more than 100 
different types of cooperatives and different trades, but also in more recent years for housing, for community health, for education, and a whole range of interesting social services. So what we've concluded from our research is that union cooperative partnerships are vital, indeed fundamental, to build a solidarity economy, but also um, partnerships with local government can be very generative as well. Additionally, we've looked at union co-op partnerships that are quite long-standing. For example, actors um, in Wales and England have developed some 30 actor co-ops hand in glove with their union equity. Uh, that model has spread to other creative industries. So for example, since the early 1990s, the Musicians Union has supported the development of 12 regional music, um, music teacher co-ops. And this model is increasingly getting taken up and there's interest more widely in the educational sector for how to do this. Um, and also we highlight the work in Denver, Colorado by the Communication Workers of America to support the development of green taxis very effectively. Other US cities are looking to this model and working to do the same. The New York Independent Drivers is an interesting um, large union getting support from the city council. Other US cities, including Cincinnati, Ohio, are working on a union co-op model. And that model, we think, is very attractive for Europe. And we've been working with trade unions here in the UK on how to introduce that more strategically. We also look at uh, public cooperative partnerships within the research and also in the readings you'll see this week, public cooperative partnerships in different cities. So for example, in Barcelona, the new Commons Party has been promoting and developing a co cooperative commons approach to the development of the solidarity economy. Preston, England is also pursuing a union co-op model. Um, and more recently, um, other cities in the UK have been looking at the success in Preston, Preston in particular, in changing public procurement rules so they can pure procure more easily and strategically from local small businesses and cooperatives. Um, so we feel that, that the public sector relationship, the relationship between the, the public sector where you can get that kind of strategic supports for social economy ideas is very important. We look at um, Jackson, Mississippi and the work that Jackson Rising has been pursuing, which is very impressive indeed strategically. But last but not least, I think we need to actually look to reform the welfare state. Guy Standing raises the importance of universal basic income to provide a new safety net for um, precarious workers. And that is something that is a very macroeconomic reform that we'll come back to also in module um, seven when we look at reforming finance. So I hope these, this introduction has been helpful for you to consider ways to approach this week. And I look forward to meeting you online and encourage you to think about what Polanyi said about the, the double movement and how he, he suggests it's important to work out not only ways to take land out of the market, but also how to take people out of the market. The economic democracy ideas that we signpost this week are all part of that way forward. Thank you very much. <laughs>